work they put in the back. So, uh, if you have your Bibles, there's several different scriptures we're going to look at. One of them, Johnny read, that's John chapter 8. And uh, when I read it, it may be a little bit different from yours. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Uh, so it may be a little bit different. I think that's the one that I sent Seth. So hopefully he got that one. No, he didn't. So it's going to be a little bit different from yours. Uh, but it does, it's pretty much the same thing. Most translations are good, I find. Just a paraphrase. But sometimes I think we look at the King James and think, that's it. That's the book from God. But it's really just a translation. So, uh, but we're going to look at, we're going to look at one of our scriptures out of John. It comes out of that particular one. Uh, this is out of the NIV. So you'll, it may sound a little bit different, but it's going to be the same. So last week we started this thing we're talking about. And uh, it's really, you know, I told you, today is the first day of the new church year, right? We sort of do a weird thing. We started in the middle of the year. So since today is April the 2nd, technically this is the first Sunday uh, for our church year. So we'll go all the way through next March. I know that's kind of weird, but that's the way it's set up and that's the way we do it. Is that okay? Not every church does that. It's not a denominational thing. It's by district. So I know you're probably thinking, why are you telling us that? Because I want you to know that we started last week talking about, about, you know, trying to figure out what in the world are we doing the things that we're doing, right? Why do we do the things that we do? Right? Why do you do what you do? Right? You ever ask yourself that? You get things to it. We, John, Mr. John and I were just talking about this in the back. We were talking about when he was uh, my youth pastor here at the church uh, many, many years ago. We were talking about some of the things we did back then. And I would always ask myself, why in the world did I do what I just did? Right? Why do we do what we do? Right? And that's a good question because a lot of times we have this sort of image of what, who we think we are and we end up doing things that don't go with the image that we think we are. And we do ask that question, why do we do the things that I do? And I'm going to give you sort of three very, very uh, common scenarios that probably will help you understand this a little bit better. So there's three of them. Well, one of them is, what do you do in the morning? Right? The other one is, what do you do in a restaurant? And the other is, what do you do with your money? Right? Very, very, very common scenarios. Right? What do you do in the morning? Right? What I do, what I do. What do you do in the morning? What do you do at a restaurant? What do you do with your finances? Very, very big thing. So when you wake up in the morning, I'm just kind of curious. Maybe you're not one of these, but maybe you are. Right? Time to get up, your alarm goes off. Right? How many use an alarm to wake up in the morning? I'm just curious. That's a few of us. So how many here, when, you, when the alarm goes off, you hit the snooze? Just raise your hand. I'm just curious. How many hit it twice, three times? Did I get a four or did I get a five, right? So you, in the morning, when the alarm gets off, you're going to hit the snooze because that's what you do, right? How many here are like me? I don't need an alarm. I just, I just, I wake up and I'm out of the bed. How many are like that? We have a few, good, amen, a few of us, woo, woo. So if, this is not me, but how many of you here jump out of the bed and you're ready to go? You jump in the club. I mean, you are there, right? You are there. One person. Okay, good. So we have a one that does that, right? So we, we, when it's in the morning, we all have these things that we do because that's what we do. So like when you go to a restaurant, right, and you're looking at the menu, how many here, you always look at the menu, and you're looking for the healthy choices. Can I get an amen? Anybody going? Nobody. Oh my goodness, we have one. Good. Woo woo. Thank you, Tracy. Looking for those healthy choices, right? So you look at the menu, get the grilled chicken, right? Maybe the salad. Very, very, very healthy. How many here look at the menu and you're looking at that good old fashioned, better tasting option? Raise your hand. Really? So that's me too. I'm always looking for the better tasting option. I don't care about the better healthy thing. I want the better tasting option. So when you look at the menu, it's like I'm looking for the chicken fried steak. <laughs> Woo, can I get an amen, right? A little gravy right on top of it. Maybe a little, maybe a little cherry pie with a little ice cream on it for the glory of God. Can I get an amen? Woo! Right? You, so that's what you do, right? 
you get you get up, you get the norm, you don't eat the norm, you go to the restaurant, you know, you're just gonna look, that's what you do when you get to the restaurant. So I don't want nobody to raise their hand, but let me, I don't want, I just don't want you to raise your hand on this, but think about finances. How many in here, when you get your check, you're always thinking, like, how can I use this for the glory of God? I know I'm going to give my 10%. When I look at it, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my check. The first 10% goes to God, right? Or how many here today, when you look at this, right, in the finances, man, a lot of times you are spending more money than you're bringing in, right? You spend everything you get, right? Or some of you may spend more than you get, right? So it's just what you do, right? So when you're thinking about these things like money, and you're thinking about getting up in the morning, you know, you, these things, they run through your mind. So the question you have to ask yourself, when you're just thinking about those, why not do what I do? And I think I'm going to give you two things, right? Not two points, but two things to help us get started here. I'm going to create a foundation if you'll give me a chance. Say, I'm going to give you a chance, preacher. Thank you, Mom. All right, we have a good couple of people here. We're going to lay down the foundation. All right, so I'm going to give you some secondary reasons why people do what they do. Right? Number one, why are you doing what you do? First of all, you just feel obligated. Some of the things you're doing in your life, you do it because you feel obligated. You want to be a good mom. You want to be a good dad. You want to be a good teen. You want to be a good son. You want to be a good daughter. You want to be a good at your job. So you do it out of obligation. You do it because you're obligated to it. Some of us, you just do it because that's what you want to do, right? Right? You want to be there for others. You want to, you want to be disciplined. You want a good outcome. You want to worship God. So the reason you're doing what you're doing is not just out of obligation. You're doing it because you want to do it. Another thing, number three, is this. Another thing people do, what they do, just a secondary reason, secondary reason is because we want to be liked. So I find myself here a lot of times. So a lot of things that I do, unfortunately, I do it because I want to be liked. I want to be accepted. I want to fit in. Right? So when, I, when something happens, I don't feel obligated so much. Sometimes I do. And sometimes I want to do it because, you know, that's what I do. But sometimes I do things just because I want to be liked. A lot of times you see this, and we talked about this, and I'm not going to go into it, but we do a lot of this on social media, right? So we want to make sure that we put the right post, we study it, we look at it, we put it on there. Why are we putting the post on there? We're doing it because we want to feel liked, we want to feel accepted, we want some affirmation, right? So that's one of the reasons, that's, that's sort of the secondary reason. But let me tell you the primary reason, right? And, I, and this is point number one if you're, if you're taking notes. Here it is. Here's what I believe the primary reason we do what we do, and it's this. You do what you do because of what you think of you. Let me say that again. You are doing what you're doing because of what you think of you. Right? So let me, let me show you a scripture. Right? Here's a great scripture. You're doing what you do because of what you think of you. Right? Here's what the Bible says. For he, whatever he thinks in his heart, what does he do? So is he. So when I tell you that you're doing the things that you're doing because of what you think of you, I'm telling you, the Bible says you're doing those things because that's what your heart says you are, and because your heart says you are, that's what you do. So a lot of times, you're doing the things that you're doing. Yeah, there's secondary reasons of being obligated. Maybe you, you just do it, right? And you want to be accepted. But the primary reason that you're doing the things that you're doing in your life is because, is because this. It's because what you think of yourself. Now here's where the devil gets you. He loves to play in this playground. We know that the Bible, we just read it, we know that the devil, the devil is at work, he wants to mess with your head, because what he does, he sort of wants, he's trying to do this, and I know I've talked about this, and I, don't, I do mean to repeat myself, because I need you to get this. Everybody say this out loud, you ready? I am created by God. Raise your hand with both of them if you believe you are created by God, right? So what God did when he created you, the Bible says he literally, in the book of Genesis, says he literally breathed life into you. And how he created that, what he did, he was creating you in the image 
Everybody say image. image. So when God created you, He created you in the image of God. You are an image bearer. Everybody say that. I am an image bearer. I bear the image of God in me. That's who I am. Right? In everything, you need to remember that. Because what you're thinking is what you're going to do. And what's happening in so many of our lives is we're allowing the devil, the one that prowls around to what? Seek you, destroy you, take away your thinking, try to fix, mess up your thinking about who you are. Today, I'm giving you the cure for stinking thinking because the Bible gives it. So the Bible says that the devil prowls around. He's created this table for you to set at. Psalms 23. I create a table for you to set. That is your table. And then all of a sudden he says, now there's going to be enemies all around you floating around. I build this table in the presence of your enemies. You hear me? Where is the enemy doing? He's prowling. What is he trying to do? Seeking who he may devour. God built you a table and put it in the middle of that. And he says, I'm going to build you a table. And every day of your life, you're going to be in this world where the devil is always prowling around, trying to seek you, destroy you. And what happens is, I made you an image barrier. And that's who you are. But what happens is, some of you are allowing the devil to sit down at your table, the one that God made for you. And you're having discussions with the devil. And you've done it for so long You've forgotten who you are. You're an image of God. Remember what happened? So you're asking yourself, what is wrong with me? Isn't that what we ask? What is wrong with me? Why can't I do this? Why can't I overcome this habit? This thing that I hold in my hand, why can't I let it go? Why, can't, why does it keep destroying me mentally and physically? It does that. What is wrong with me? Why can't I beat it? Remember in the Garden of Eden, after Adam and Eve messed up, they went and hid themselves, and they covered themselves, and then God came looking for them in the garden, and he goes, where are you guys? And they came out, and they said, we hid ourselves and covered ourselves because we were naked. And God said to them, who told you you were naked? Who told you that? What he's doing is, it wasn't so much about the nakedness. He says, who told you you're that person? You listen? Who told you you're that person? Because you're not. You're made totally different than that. But somehow, the devil came into Eve, and what did he do? He convinced her she was something that, that was different from God who God created her to be. So I'm saying to you, if you're trying to get this, I know some of you like a cow with a new fence, you're like, no, I don't get what is this, you know. What I'm saying to you is, you are who you are because what you think of yourself, right? You do what you do, right? You do what you do because of what you think of uh, you, right? So here, here was a study I read as I was getting ready for this uh, series of messages. I listened to a lot of podcasts, read a couple of books, and I want because I wanted to understand. And I've done this throughout my career as a pastor, as a minister. I wanted to dig deep, 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 deep. And here's what most studies say that happens to you as an individual. And they, and they say it happens like a millisecond, boom, just like that. Your mind is going to process three questions. In every situation, every scenario, your brain is going to go through these three questions, right? And it's going to ask it, and it does it so fast, it does it subconsciously, you don't even know that you're doing it. But it's how you're made, right? So here's the question. You begin the first one. What type of person am I? You're going to ask that. You get in a situation, maybe it's a tempting situation, maybe it's a habit, and you begin to ask yourself, what kind of person am I? And then the next question is this, right? So the question, am I a believer? Am I a doubter? Am I disciplined? Right? You're asking all this, what kind of person am I? In that situation, in that scenario, you're going to ask yourself, what kind of person am I? 
And then you're going to ask, what kind of situation is this? Right? This situation that I'm in, what kind of situation is it? Right? And then you're going to ask yourself the last question, what does a person like me do in a situation like this? It's a process your brain goes through. So if you're thinking in your mind, and the devil has convinced you that I, am an addic I have an addictive personality, so I can't overcome this habit because that's just who I am, knowing that that's not true, but you, now you're thinking in your mind, that's who I am as a person. I have a very addictive personality. I just do that. That's who I am. Then what's going to happen, I'm in a situation, and because I have this addictive personality, when I get in that situation, that's what I do in this, situ in this situation. Because I am that person, I'm going to act this way. How many of that makes sense? It does. It should, because that's exactly what's happening in your brain. You don't even know it subconsciously. It's happening. You're in it. You're trying to find, well, this is the person I am. And because this is the person I am, this is the situation. In the situation, this is how I act based on who I am. So the point is, what kind of person am I? So think about this. So you're, in a, you're taking a test. Maybe some younger people, you're taking a test, right? And you can see your neighbor's paper. It's there. And you know that she's the smartest person in the class. Right? And you hear the question that you don't know. And you're like, hmm, she's got to know because she's the smartest person in the class. So now you're thinking, well, you know, I'm the kind of person that's not very smart. That's who I am. Right? That's who I am. I'm, not, I'm just not smart, so maybe God from above has created a divine moment here. Because, I mean, why else would the answer be right there in front of me? It's God speaking through her to me. I can write that answer down. <laughs> right? Amen. Amen. And I, I think that's what happens. You have convinced yourself that's the person you are. And because you have convinced yourself that you're that type of person, then it makes it easier to do the things you shouldn't be doing. Everybody all right? right? And it's a, it's a mindset, because you're trying to figure out, how can I do in this situation? You're, you're standing around a bunch of people, right? And they're gossiping. We don't have this problem in our church, but let's just say we do, and I don't know about it, right? And we're gossiping. And in that situation, you know this ain't right. Even if they told you, I'm only telling you this so you can pray. Right? I'm only telling you this so you can pray for them. Now what they're doing is they want to gossip. And in that situation, do you listen and join? Right? Well, you know, God has put me in this divine, divine moment here. He, he wouldn't have put me here unless he needed me to listen. And he, he needs me to say what I need to say about this person. You need to stop. That's not right. Because you convinced yourself you're this type of person. In this situation, that's what I've got to do. So going back to what we were thinking a while ago, it's like this, right? So you're driving down the road. How many of you saw that video of those two truck drivers at that Stonewall incident? Oh my gosh, I finally, I've been hearing about it. Finally, I got and watched it yesterday. I'm thinking, I go down that road every single day. Man, I'm glad I missed that one. I mean, they were. So, you know, you ever get in a situation where somebody just cuts you off? Amen? And I know some of you, you're like this, you're thinking, man, that guy just cut me off, I'm mad, I am a child of God, I'm an ambassador, so I've got to go and catch that guy and tell him what he did wrong, even if I have to peel the banana to do it, I'm going to show him you're number one. Right? Everybody <laughs> okay? Everybody say, whoa, wait a minute. Because that's the person I am. They need to know that what they did is wrong, and I'm going to tell them. Or maybe you're that type of person that says, wait a minute, I'm a child of God, I'm a believer, I really am a believer, I'm not somebody that's going to lose my temper, I'm a believer. And in this situation, here's how I need to act. Maybe, maybe that type of person did something, right? And you're thinking, well, maybe they're just late for work, right? Maybe, maybe they're on their way to have a baby, right? Maybe they need to go to the rescue, but they're doing everything they can to get there. Can I get an amen? You know what that feels like. You know, you... And what you're doing is you're processing it, right? In this situation, this is the person that I am. So here's our, 
Here to me is the biggest issue. Biggest issue. And I want to go back to that scripture that we talked about a while ago. Because we're thinking, how come I can't change? We're asking ourselves, how come I can't change? I, it's like we said last week when, when Paul said, man, I want to change, but I can't. I try to do right, but it seems like every time I try to do right, I can't do right. right? It's that same sort of thing. Why can't I change? And I want to show you from this scripture. Right? I want to show you from this scripture what I'm trying to say. And here's the second thing if you're taking notes. right? So the reason that we sometimes can't change is because of what we think of ourselves what you think of you. So the next thing is this, if you want to change what you do, look up here. If you want to change what you do, you got to change what you think of you. Right? You've got to figure out a way. The reason, look, I'm telling you, the reason so many in this room are losing battle after battle against the devil is because you convince, you let the devil convince you that you're somebody that you're not. Let me say that again. You've allowed the enemy to convince you to be somebody that God never created you to be. And you believed a lie. Let's read this scripture. Johnny read it, but let me read it again. Here it is. And Jesus said, this is Jesus talking. I need you to understand this. This is Jesus speaking. Now watch what Jesus says in this situation. He said this, the devil has always been a person of hate. Right? Who is the devil? He's a person of hate. He's hating the truth. So we know that the devil is always opposed to anything that is true. Because there is no truth in him. If you hear a lie that's going on in your head, and you know it's not from God, and there's nothing biblical about it, I promise you it's probably the devil in your head trying to convince you something that's not true. Because that's all he knows. So when he lies, it is consistent with his character. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Then what, look what he says. Watch, watch, watch. The devil is a liar. But then watch what Jesus says. So, since you believe those lies, look, since you believe the lies the devil is telling you, knowing that he's the father of lies, that he knows nothing but lies, you know that. So what Jesus says is this. So when I tell you the truth, what happens? You naturally don't believe me. Look up here. If I have one passion in preaching, this is it right here. If I have one passion and you hear me preach all the time, this is it. You are believing what the devil tells you, knowing that it's a lie, and because you're so wrapped up in that, it's distorted your identity. Remember, you are an image of God. That's your identity. You are a, an image of Him. You bear that image. It's who you are. It's who you were created to be. But what's happened is, the devil has told you from the very beginning of your life, from the very beginning, he has been whispering these lies in your ear over and over and over and over again. And some of you start to believe the lie. And Jesus says, when I try to tell you the truth, guess what? You don't believe it. You catch that. So, if you want to change what you do, you've got to change what you think of you. You're so used to believing this. Now remember what Jesus said. He said, I am the truth. Everybody say, I am the truth. I am life. Right? And what the truth will do, the Bible says, if you know the truth, the truth will what? Oh, what? Are you going with me here? I mean, we're talking about Jesus saying to you that your problem is you're believing these lies of the devil. And when I try to tell you the truth, you don't believe it. And what he's saying is this truth that I am, I am the truth. I'll make you free. When I give you the truth, the truth will set you free. And then he says you'll be free indeed. 
But we're believing the lie, and because we believe the lie, what happens to us? We are trapped, we're paralyzed, we're imprisoned by that truth. And, and we believe it, and what happens is, when you keep believing it, and it distorts your identity, it distorts your success. You can't be what God needs you to be. You can't win the victories in your life because somehow you've got that truth where the lie that the devil keeps telling you is embedded. And even if God comes behind him and says, wait a minute, don't forget who you are. You're a child of God. You're more than a conqueror. This is what I'm trying to tell you. I can give you truth and the truth will set you free from whatever's binding you. I can set you free and when you're free, you're free indeed. That's the person that I am. But we don't believe it. We're believing what the devil tells us. And the only way we're ever going to change what we do is we got to change what we think of ourselves. And we need to see not what the devil is saying because we know that the devil has distorted our identity. We don't even know who we are anymore. You're walking around calling yourself a believer and you walk out that door and you really are a believer. But you don't live like it when you're around all your friends at work, when you're around other people, when your other friends are around you. All of a sudden, this person that God has told you to be, you're not that person. And what do you say? Well, that's just who I am. Come on. Y'all glad y'all here today? Amen. That's what you're doing. You are saying... This is just the person I am. I have an addictive personality. And the devil has got some of you right there. But you don't know my background. You don't know what I've been up against. I know and I don't know, but God knows. And let me tell you, what God is trying to teach you today and trying to say to you is that I'm going to give you truth, but you keep believing the lie. You're believing what the devil has telling you to be, and you're becoming that person. You're believing what other people are telling you, and you're becoming that person that they say you are. And why are we doing that? It's a tough... I, I'll be honest with you. I, I struggle with that. I know the devil attacks my identity. He says sometimes you're bad, you can't change, right? There'll be times when I'm like stressed out. You know, it's been one of those last couple of weeks, you know, I've been like overwhelming, right? So I'm trying to get ready for things and trying to get, and I, I find out all of a sudden, I look up the, the schedule for the sunrise service, right? So I know I've got a class starting Tuesday, right? So I'm starting to teach a class Tuesday to the students in Louisiana at the Louisiana School Ministry. I start teaching that. So I'm getting ready for that. It's an eight-week intense study, and I'm the one leading. I'm studying for that, right? So I'm getting ready for my sermons on Sunday, getting ready for my sermons on Wednesday. Oh, by the way, I have a full-time job that I work every day. It takes about 50 hours out of my schedule every week. And all of a sudden, I open up the community service, seeing whose turn it is to preach this week. And guess what I find out? I'm the one preaching. I'm like, you got to be, I was like stressed. So I thought tomorrow, so I was just a couple days ago, I said, Saturday, man, I'm going to just do nothing. Because stress will take it down, right? Because I just need a little moment to myself. Just a small moment. I don't need much. And then all of a sudden we get a phone call Friday night saying, Mom, my, toe, my car has been towed. My son thought parking in the Walmart and going across the street to a concert, he would be okay. But Walmart said, I don't think so. We're going to tow your car. And they told Noah's car. He gets back and there ain't nothing there. And you're like, well, that's the big deal. The big deal is in my name. So guess what I did yesterday? I drove to Dallas to get it back. And that was my day. I'm like, wow, well, thank you, Lord. But I guess I was kind of stress-free. It was just me in the car, in the crazy traffic, and the slow truckers. They won't move. Okay, well, whoa, slow down. Oh yes. <laughs> woo. So all that stress, you know, and then sometimes I get, and Renee probably will amen this, sometimes I... I just, I take it out, I get stressed and I'll snap at Renee. Do I ever do that? Occasionally, right? And she's like, why are you snapping at me? Like, what did I do? And I don't realize I'm like stressed out. And then what the devil 
says, yeah, devil, you know your problem is you're just a bad husband. You're no good, right? You need to just tell her to go find another man. Because that's how the devil works. He sort of does this thing where he gets in your head, and all of a sudden, he tells you things that aren't true. And you believe him. Because what is he trying to do? He's trying to distort your identity. Who are you? You're an image bearer. You bear the image of God in you. When God created you, that's who he created you to be. When Christ comes inside, boom, that image comes alive. You are the image of God. You are a believer. You're a Christian. That's who you are. Some of us can't break the cycle. What does the devil do? He comes in, tells you a lie. You believe it, distorts your identity. That identity distorts your success. It creates the habits in your life. You hear me? So since your identity is distorted, you've forgotten who you are. Like, look up here. You've forgotten who, your, your, your identity has been distorted. And then what happens, because it's distorted, you sort of go down this pathway that creates the very, very damaging habits in your life. And when you have bad habits, what they do, they sort of, they sort of tell you that, man, that distorted identity is okay. It sort of says, yeah, it's okay. You know, you got bad habits, that's who you are. And you believe it. And some of you right now, you're so trapped in the lie that it can't change. And that's kind of what we're talking about. How can I quit doing the things that I'm doing that are bringing disruption into my life? What can I do? Well, I think there's a great scripture here. I'm almost done, and here it is. I believe that a Christ-centered identity leads to christ a Christ honoring habits. Christ honoring habits reinforce a Christ centered identity. Right? So, a lot of us, you know, when Satan comes along and tries to tell us that, we need to always remember what does Jesus say? Not so much what would Jesus do, but what does Jesus say? Because you're believing the lies for so long and you've sort of gotten into this idea of that's who you are. You need to get to the place in your life that you're saying, what is God saying? What does Jesus say? Well, the, what the problem is, y'all almost done hang in there. Here's the thing. What we're doing is we're not reading God's Word. Look up here. You're not reading God's Word. And because you're not reading God's Word, you have no idea what God is saying about who you are. Right? Maybe, if I asked everybody in here to raise their hand, how many read their Bible every day? You'd be shocked at how many could. If I said today, how many in here read your Bible once a week, not including Sunday, when I read it to you, or when Johnny reads it to you? How many in here read your Bible once a week? A lot of them couldn't say because they haven't picked up the Word of God, so they have no idea what God is saying to them. So when the lies come, they have nothing to counter because remember, the word is your offensive weapon. It cuts both ways, right? It cuts those that come against you. You have ability to fight with the word of God, but it cuts you too. It shows you the things that are true and not true. It shows you the lies. And when you expose the lie, you're able to get away from that lie and get back to the truth. And what does the truth do? The truth sets you what? Free. Free. Isn't that awesome? That's what the word of God is. Is saying to every single one of us. So here's the last thing, and it's this. Instead of focusing on what you want to do, you've got to decide what does God want me to become. What does he want me to become? Right? Let me, let me read this out of Ephesians chapter 4, and I'll be done. What do you want? Right? You do what you do because of what you think. So how am I going to change that? Because now, preacher, you, you let me see the things that I need to change. I know I need to change because I'm not thinking right. Because the Bible says if I don't think right, whatever I think, that's what I am. So I've got to get back to thinking right. So here's what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 21 and 22. He says, instead, what do you do? You let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. The, the Spirit has to do the renewal part. 
I just not going to happen overnight. You can't decide here today, I'm going to change my way of thinking and think that's going to do it. It's not going to happen. You have to let him renew it. Renew your thoughts. Renew your attitudes. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And then he says this, you throw off the old nature, you put on the new nature, created by God, like God, truly righteous and holy. So, let me just say this real quick and I'll be done. Who are you? How many here have given their heart to Jesus? Raise your hand. I mean, you know, you know. Man, if it was over today, we're doing, if you want to learn about the end of time, come on Wednesday night, we're talking about it. But you know, if God was to call us home right now, and you believe in a pre rapture thing, you know that when God comes, man, you're gone. Because in your heart, you know. Right? You've given your heart to Jesus. Here's what God says about you. He says you are a new creation in Jesus. Right? He says you are God's workmanship. That is his poetic statement about you. You are his workmanship created in Jesus. You are the light of the world. You are an ambassador. Everybody say, Amen. I am an ambassador of the highest ranking diplomat sent by God in the light to be the light of the world. You are more than a conqueror through Christ. You're a child of the living God, forgiving and redeemed. Somebody say amen. You are chosen, called, set apart, filled with the Spirit, raised by Christ. The devil is a liar. But Jesus says this. He says the truth will set you free. I'm going to ask you to stand up. Woo! How many believe that? Just say amen. amen. You believe that? Clap real loud. Woo! Keep reminding yourself. Keep telling yourself. Every day when the devil comes and you get in that situation and you're like, who am I? What is this situation? And what do I do in this situation? Your brain's doing that. You need to figure out who you are so in that situation you are being a barrier to light. You are a conqueror. That situation, don't let it conquer. You rise above it because you are a child of the king. You're an ambassador. And you go out and ask for every day to be that. You're a diplomat of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You've been changed. You've been redeemed. Live like it. Every single day. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you so much. For all that you're doing. Thank you for giving us your truth that we may stand. And maybe there are some here today that would say, you know what? And I, I am that person. Preacher, I'm that person. Man, it seems like every time I get in this situation, my brain just clips off. And all I can hear are all the things about how bad I am, how I can't do this, how I'm no good. And somehow, in this situation, whatever it is, I just don't find people. And then when I blow it, the first thing I ask is, why in the world did I just do what I did? And maybe you are here today and that's what you're thinking. There's been things in your life you've been trying to overcome and you can't figure out, why am I doing what I'm feeling? Why am I doing what I'm feeling? Why am I doing? Why am I doing what I'm doing? And you keep asking yourself that over and over and over. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's because you've been leaving the lies of the devil for so long. You may be here today and you're like, okay, preacher, I understand now. I get it. I've been believing these lies, and today I want to make a commitment that today I'm going to quit listening to the devil, and I'm going to start listening to Jesus and he tells me who I am. If that you don't you to raise your hand right now. I got mine up. I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm your pastor, but I know the devil's always up in my Kool-Aid. Every single day, a lot of times he knows what flavor it is. I'm telling you. You can put your hands down. Maybe you're here today and you don't even know who Jesus is. Man, let me tell you what. If the death, if the Lord was to come back right now, man, you don't even know because the reason you keep living like you're living is because there's no God in there. I mean, you come to church, you understand it, you listen, but you just ain't never given your heart and your life to it. You never ask God to forgive you for your sins. Nobody looking around this way. We're almost done. We're almost done. Christian, be praying. Start praying right now. Start praying. Somebody in here needs, needs Jesus. 
and our prayers are the only thing that's going to get them there. Man, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, He's never touched your heart, never saved you. You never asked God to forgive you for your sins. Let me tell you, it's so simple. It's really, really simple. It's a hard thing. But you got to admit, hey, I'm a sinner. I am a sinner. And I believe that what Jesus did for me on the cross to take away that sin, I believe it. So what I do today is I confess my sins to God. And I receive Him as my, my Lord, as my Savior. Now, I don't know if anybody here prayed that. And if you did, then that's awesome. Nobody looking around. Maybe that was your prayer. Maybe you prayed that. That was your prayer. Anybody here? Lord, I want to thank you. Lord, I want to thank you for the one that raised their hand today. For that one, Lord, that really seen that there's a need for you in their life. Lord, they've seen the things that they're doing and they need to change and the only way to change is to really find themselves centered on you. Lord, I pray you help them as they, Lord, give their life to you each and every day. Lord, I pray for those that are here today that are trying their best to work through changes in their life and it seems like the changes are really tough. They've gotten into this mindset where that's just who they are and they really have believed the devil and now they believe that that's who they are. And they're forgetting what Jesus is saying. Is that, no, this is who you are. And I hope that there are some here today that's grabbed that truth. And I pray this in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray with the one that's here. And if you'd like to come and join us. Today is the first Sunday of the month. Today we do communion, so I'm going to ask you to stand and uh, we're going to do communion. So walk up, grab you a. <coughs> So the communion that we're about to be a part of is uh, instituted by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a sacrament which proclaims the life, His life, His suffering, and His sacrificial death and resurrection. And the hope of His coming again, it shows forth the Lord's death and His return. The supper is a means of grace in which Christ is present by the Spirit. So we believe that as we take the Lord's Supper, that His Spirit is present with us. It is not to be received in reverent appreciation. It is to be received in reverent appreciation and the gratefulness for the work of Christ. We do this because of what God did for us. Through Christ, all those who are truly repentant, forsaking their sin, and believing in Christ for salvation are invited to participate in the death and resurrection of Christ. We come to the table that we may be renewed in life and salvation and be made one in the Spirit. So we do this to renew what God has done. It's like, a, it's like remembering the love that God gave us. But the, the great thing is we're remembering what He did for us, right? Not just His death and His resurrection, but it's also remembering 
remembering what, what he did for us when he gave us salvation. So it's a dual thing that we're doing today. So we gave you grace by giving you a new way of doing this. You don't have to peel the two layers back. You just have to do the top and the bottom. Everybody say amen. amen. Woo. So, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you, preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and be thankful. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for you, preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Think this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and be thankful. Got a little kick there. <laughs> All right, let me pray that that goes down like it should. Lord, thank you so much for our time. Thank you for your blessings. That be with us as we leave. We give you praise and glory for all that took place today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.